And in this case, you can just forward the message to the Decora T. This is called, this is an anti-pattern called middleman. <clears throat> because it does nothing. It's not injecting a behavior mm -hmm. into this method. It's just forwarding. It's creating one extra level of interaction with no benefits. Here we have a benefit because we are intercepting the call, injecting some behavior, and passing the call forward. So this level of interaction has a benefit, but here it doesn't. It's just a middleman. I receive a message and I forward it without doing anything. Mm -hmm. And this is because all the methods are in the same protocol. But if you broke that down into separate protocols, you would only implement the methods you care about. If you avoid an extra level of indirection. So if you break this down into three protocols, like a cart manager, a favorite manager, or a cart service, a favorite service, and an item service, then this protocol only needs to implement the ones it cares about. It cares about the cart service and the favorite service, but not the items. Make sense? Yes. And that's one of the benefits, because when you start composing types, you will start finding out that you end up with middle main everywhere, because like you are composing so many details in the protocol that you end up having to implement that to satisfy mm -hmm. the compiler, even though you don't need it. And then you also need to test that you're forwarding the message. You need to start doing a lot of work, unnecessary work, and adding interaction that is not needed as well. And that's why we try to avoid putting everything in the same protocol. It may look like handy when everything is in there and you can access the methods, but it prevents composability of the modules. Or makes it harder. It doesn't prevent, it makes it harder. You would do more work to achieve the same. Makes sense. Like to separate things into smaller protocols, smaller classes, smaller structs, then you can more easily compose them, reuse them in different contexts with only what you specifically need. It facilitates testing as well, because you need to add a test here as well to make sure it's doing what it's supposed to do. But what it's supposed to do, nothing. So <laughs> you need to add a test just to make sure you don't have a, a ratio at runtime. That's a signal, by the way. If you if you become aware of this happening, you're probably you know, using the middleman handy pattern right there. <laughs> so keep an eye for that. If your test does, you know, you test something you, that you just pass a message, then yeah, that's probably it. You need to rethink your design a little bit. Yes. Makes sense. So the solution here would be to break it down into separate protocols. And then you only implement the protocols you, you need. It facilitates composition. I'll leave it as an exercise. Yes. But the thing is, if we break down into um, smaller protocol, there may be protocol that has only one method. Lots of them will have only one method. That's good. Yeah. That's a good thing. Yeah. A I protocol with only that. one method can be transformed into a closure. Yeah. Okay. A protocol with one method. Mm -hmm. Say items service can easily be transformed into a closure. Vice versa, a closure can be con transformed into a protocol with one method. That's a good thing. Protocols with one method are much more composable than protocols with. 100 methods. <laughs> the more methods you add to it, the less composable it is. The more concrete it starts becoming. Yeah. So people have no problem with closures. No problem with closures. They love closures. But when they see a protocol with one method, they hate it. <laughs> <laughs> but they're pretty much the same thing. They're an abstraction over yeah. a single method. <laughs> yeah.